Hey, hey, music lovers, Jeff here, and it is a Saturday morning. Um, it's pushing about 10 o'clock now. I got home from record store day around 9.30. I wanted to get into what I got today. First, I did shoot a little bit of video uh, pre-morning uh, <laughs> idea. Basically, um, I'm going to show some footage of just me at the, at the actual in line. But anyway, um, I'm going to show some clips of that, and then we'll get right into what we got. 4.25 a.m., on Saturday, record store day. Didn't really plan on leaving this early. Had my alarm set for five. Um, they start handing out tickets at the door at six o'clock to let people get a place in line. And I was planning on just shooting, be there a little bit before that. But hey, your body says you don't want to get any more sleep. So why don't you just stay up? So I went ahead and jumped up at four and got dressed. So let's head on down here. There were already people in line at the store at 7 30 friday morning so i'm sure the line's gonna be pretty long this year so we'll see we'll be there in a few minutes well we've arrived and um i'm surprised there's not as many people i mean there was about the same amount of people as there were it seems when i saw pictures yeah stores right there and it only goes down to it looks like about there so yeah so maybe we're in pretty good condition Probably be the maybe second group in. All right, well, go get in line. So yeah, I just got my number. Um, I was wrong as far as um where the line went because of the lights being on and off in front of stores and people taking a break from where they were sitting in front of stores. It didn't look like it was that late. The line went all the way to the very end of the shopping center around the corner. It was um just around the corner about two people behind the corner but then it continued for the next hour building up it went around the side and all the way to the back of the building um, i know that the record store owner came out and took a video so i'm going to try to capture that and maybe show a quick clip of that now we got to wait for a while until they open the doors at eight o'clock and uh, they estimate that my group fifth group 20 people at a time that they estimate uh will probably get in somewhere a little after nine so i'll be back all right so i went home after getting my number i am number Group five, number 14, they let in 20 at a time. So there are four groups of 20 ahead of me and I'm number 14. So I'm technically number 94 to go in the store. At this point, it is about 8.45. I went home, grabbed a bite to eat and everything and um, got home about 6.30. So here I am back at 8.45, probably be uh, going in a little bit. What they do is, you can't see it from here, but I got a, a view through these cars where there's a big sign in the window that says four, which means that group four is to line up outside. And so once group three is done going through musical chairs, 20 people at a time, getting their choice one at a time of records, then they'll let in group four. And when group four goes in, they'll put up a sign saying group five to come line up. So that's what I'm waiting for. Um, group four has been lining up for about 10 minutes now. So it depends on how slow group three is. But I'm thinking that they'll probably call for group five to line up probably next 10 minutes or so. And then after that, I'll be standing out there waiting to let it in. And then we'll go in and grab some stuff. We'll see what happens. Okay. So now, once we got in, the uh, five groups ahead of, I was the fifth group, four groups ahead of me, four groups of 20. I was the fifth group. And the uh, got in. And as, as kind of expected, the majority of the 90-some people ahead of me tended to be People who were there for one, maybe two albums, and they were gone. So the groups moved pretty fast. Lots of parents with teenage girls, and I knew they were all there for Taylor Swift, and they were probably one and done and out of there. So the groups moved pretty fast. Um, so real quick, what I got. First off, they gave everybody there, at least the first 100 to 150 people got this slip mat of the Beatles Revolver. They also had some T-shirts of this that they gave away. And funny story, the people in front of me, about four or five people in front of me was a, a father-daughter. And the father was there in this case, not the daughter. So when they hand out the tickets, he goes, well, she doesn't need one. She's not going to buy any records. She's just here to hang out with me. And the guy's like, well, you know, we're going to be having raffles and stuff. So, you know, she could still possibly win something and gave her a ticket anyway. She won one of the T-shirts. That was, that was the funny thing. She didn't even plan on winning and uh, didn't plan on even getting a ticket. But anyway. So, got in, they had, I checked, they had videos ahead of time of all the stuff they got, everything that I wanted, plus a lot more that I totally had missed out on. My list kept growing. They had it all there, and I kind of knew the quantities, kind of had an idea which ones I wanted to attack first to make sure I got them, 
And so I went in there and I put them in the order that I grabbed them. First up, I grabbed the Eric Carr Rockology. I knew they had a handful, but not a large handful. I didn't think there's going to be a lot of competition for this, but I didn't want to take a chance. So I grabbed it. Um, it is, of course, the I have the CD of Rockology. It came out years ago. This is the another vinyl reissue of it. They made it to look like the other solo albums. Even went so far as to include one of the posters similar to the other solo albums from back in 78. So that's kind of neat. So this one's a double record set. When I first saw it, I totally forgot it was a double record set. And when I saw the price, I'm like, what the heck? All the prices seemed up there. But then I realized it was a double record set. I said, okay, that's not bad. Kind of a clear black orange splatter on one album. And the other one is orange with black and white kind of splattery stuff in there. It's got one of these OBI type strips, the OB strips like they kind of do. So, and there's actually some bonus tracks on here, which I assume are not on the CD that I have. So, you know, it was kind of worth grabbing for that. So I wanted to get that first. Then I went back around. So what they do, you go through musical chairs. So the second time around, my group, and it's funny, the first time around, then two or three people had already dropped out after one record. Just like I thought, the group got smaller. Um, I saw these right by me. I kept walking by them, and I saw they only had like three left, and I thought, well, I better grab one. So I got Operation Mind Crime 2 by Queensryche. This is pretty much one of the main ones I wanted to get. Man, was this one expensive. <clears throat> this one was pricey. And I'm going to be really bummed if six months down the road they put it out in black and half the price but what it is what it is and you know it's on red it also is a double record set gatefold very much like operation Minecraft, the first one as far as the whole idea what they were looking for and going after like a second record there so you know I like the album. I thought it was a good album, so I definitely wanted to get that, so I grabbed that. Then the third one I wanted, of course, when I got this, I knew the price on this one was outrageous, and this one's probably going to show up again. I know I'm going to kick myself because it's going to show up again probably in six months on a different color for half the price, but, um, you know, you save up for this Record Store Day stuff, and it's like, okay... And when I got it, I saw that he had a lot of them. He said, we have been, they have been flying off the shelf. And that's the Van Halen right here, right now. Sammy Hagar, the first of the Sammy Hagar era. It is a, it's a kind of a booklet for record set. It's got a couple bonus tracks that were not on the original record. So remastered from the original master tapes on red vinyl. translucent type red so the guy in front of me the one with the daughter he was there he, he wanted to get this and when they told him the price he said i uh he walked around one more time and he came to the front line and said i pass and i kind of should have done that but you know is what it is fourth time around i wanted the do live in fresno um love do great do uh, reissue first time on vinyl tlp first time on vinyl 1983. I think I saw Dio on tour in 84, maybe early 85. Same, uh, this is a double record set. Basically the same stage so show and everything. So, just a great memory of going on another translucent red. Everything's translucent red today, it seems like. Then I'm like, okay, I probably should be done. But I went back to it and I said, there was one other one I wanted, and that's the B Mr. Big. I bought the last Mr. Big on Record Store Day, and I thought I might as well get this one because I, you know, dig it, and I wanted to get it. Um, 3500 solid blue. And the translucent also. Insert kind of generic with some lyrics. Not a hot, whole lot going on there. So... That was all. I had about five or six other things on my list. There were some things that I was like, I wouldn't mind having, but once I started seeing the prices on these, I had to stop. Maybe those will be still existing later on down the road. Maybe they'll go on sale. The Suzy Quattro, the Generation X. Um, kind of was toying with the idea of getting the Sparks reissues. Um, they had pop music, which I didn't look at it. I love that song, but it sounded like they were playing it overhead, and it sounded like the same song, just pop music, different mixes, not like the full album. 
didn't want to go there. I was going to get the Helter Skelter picture disc. I'm not a big picture disc fan, but I like Motley Crue. And I was like, nah, I don't want to get another picture disc. It's just, it's like nothing really major new there. The Dio picture discs every year. I'm just, those picture discs drive me crazy. I picked this up. This is actually picked up. Um, Scott Waters asked me if I see it to get it. I messaged him right as I was in line. I said, do you still want it? Because he messaged me this a couple weeks ago. Do you still want it? Of course, I know he's like three hours behind me, probably still in bed because it's like nine o'clock in the morning here. So it's like six out there. I went ahead and got it because if he, for some reason, doesn't want it, I mean, I, I'm not going to complain about keeping it. But that's the Ted Nugent Vault. Nuge Vault. Um, studio Rarities and Alternative Takes. So I went ahead and grabbed that. I know he's a huge Ted Nugent fan. I'm a nominal Ted Nugent fan and only have a couple records by him. So I grabbed that. Um yeah, that's it, though. So that was my fun on Record Store Day. And um, so many great things. So many people. I don't know how many people were at the store. If I was number 94, I saw people who were wandering around the outside of the store waiting to get in who had tickets number 120-something. So I know there's a couple more groups. But anyway, it was fun. It was great. Fun to do. Got some great stuff. That's it for this one. Rock on and rock hard.